Good evening, everyone. Thank you, Sam and Lynn, for this chance to guide Vancouverites to a place that's easy to get to, but not on all the maps. Here's a view of UBC as you'll never see it. Wreck Beach is just off the lower edge. That's how the planners imagined the West Point Gray campus in 1914, a year before the university opened in its temporary premises in Fairview. UBC wouldn't settle on the point until the 1920s. When this sketch was made, the future campus was a tract of clear cut at the end of a logging road. The Musqueam people had long since been dispossessed of the land. Nobody was living or working there. But just outside the university perimeter, barely visible at the bottom of the campus plan, two large residential lots had been staked out. One of them would soon be sold to Lily Lefebvre. That's Lily in 1890. She and her husband John, a physician with the Canadian Pacific Railway, had moved here from Ontario in 1886, the year Vancouver was incorporated as a city. That was their home on the far left at Hastings and Howe, just a few blocks away. John Lefebvre was a city councillor. Lily supported the arts and wrote poetry. They did well out of Vancouver's first real estate boom. John died in 1906, leaving Lily with funds to build an Edwardian mansion with an English-style garden out on the point, which in 1915 is what she did. Here she is later in life, the Lady of Langer Ravine. Whoops, how did that happen? And here she is in the garden at Langer Ravine in the late 1920s with her great nephews and great nieces. My thanks to the family for these pictures. The adult in the bottom photo at the back, if you can see him in the shades, is Lily's nephew. Frederick Lefebvre Baker. He was a flyer in the Great War who diced with the Red Baron over no man's land. The little girl in the middle of that same picture is his daughter, Rosemary. A few years earlier, her nanny had been found shot dead on the laundry room floor of their Shaughnessy Heights home. But that's another story. In 1946, Lily's executors sold Langer Ravine to Ronald and Helen Graham, who'd recently moved their large family to Vancouver from Montreal. Two of the Graham girls are here this evening. Their younger brother, Bill, has been leader of the Federal Liberal Party. The Grahams modernized the house and hosted some of the best parties thrown in Vancouver in the 1950s. Prince Harry's great-grandfather, the Duke of Edinburgh, once dove in at the wrong end of their swimming pool. But Ronald and Helen Graham were more than just indulgent hosts. Like the Lefebvres, they were philanthropists, and they were very generous to UBC. Here they are in 1949 with the Chancellor and President dedicating the university gates at West 10th and Blanca. In 1963, after Ronald Graham's death, the Graham family house passed to the university. So what would UBC do with this amazing venue? For nearly three decades after that, Langer Ravine was home to the School of Social Work. But the true UBC vocation of the former Graham House would be decided by Cecil Green, abetted by his wife Ida. There they are. Cecil Green, who would live to be 103, was born in 1900 in Manchester, England. His family moved to the US in time for him to experience the great San Francisco earthquake and fire. Then they moved to Vancouver. Cecil studied science at UBC and the Fairview Shacks and graduated in electrical engineering from MIT. After an abortive attempt to manufacture neon lights in Vancouver in the 1920s, he was far ahead of his time, he went on to make a fortune south of the border as one of the founders of Texas Instruments. Cecil and Ida Green practiced philanthropy on a heroic scale, favoring universities and medical schools in the US. But in the 1960s, they were drawn back to Vancouver by a prominent local citizen and member of the Faculty of Medicine at UBC, Dr. William Gibson. Cecil Green called Bill Gibson his most expensive friend. <laughs> Bill's daughter, Kate, is with us this evening. 
1965, at Bill's prompting, Cecil and Ida Green bought the Heritage House next to the former Graham House for UBC as a venue for social events that would link town and gown. And it's at that point, between town and gown, city and university, that our story becomes really interesting. Bill Gibson, who was very active in Vancouver City Affairs, also had a strong attachment to Oxford University. In the late 1970s, he persuaded Cecil and Ida Green to donate a million pounds for the founding of a college for graduate medical students based at the Radcliffe Observatory in Oxford. And so was founded the first Green College. On the left in this picture is Sir Richard Doll, the first head of Green College Oxford, with Cecil and Bill after lunch at the Randolph Hotel in Oxford. Richard Doll was a great epidemiologist, one of the first researchers to demonstrate a link between smoking and cancer. But the bellhop rather steals the picture, if you can see him in the background here. 30 years ago, lunchtime discussions in Oxford could still set the menu for dinner in Vancouver. UBC does not have colleges, or at least it didn't. But Cecil Green was honorary patron of the university's fundraising campaign in the late 1980s. And when it came time for his own gift, he told President Strangway during one of their fishing trips that he wanted to find a, found a college at UBC for graduate students from all fields of study and that it should be based at the former Graham House. Renovation of the house and construction of new residences began in 1992. The college admitted its first resident members in September 1993. 100 residents live there at any time and eat dinner together five nights a week. There are graduate and professional students in fields ranging from astronomy and biodiversity to women's studies and zoology. There are also postdoctoral fellows, visiting professors, visiting writers, musicians and artists. They come from all over the world. And so, the house that Lily built nearly 100 years ago is now home to a vibrant, multidisciplinary community of scholars, a community that exists purely for conversation, ideas, and friendship. That is Green College at UBC, and there's nowhere else quite like it in the world. And be assured, we haven't forgotten the tradition of hospitality established by the Lefebvre and Graham families. The more than 150 lectures, readings, recitals, and other events that the college hosts every year are open to everyone at no charge, and guests are welcome to stay for dinner. For more information, see the Green College page in your salon program. Yes, there are daily salons at Green College, and you are invited. All the historic enablers of the college, the Lefebvre's, the Grahams, Bill Gibson, the Greens, were committed Vancouverites who believed that UBC ought to be a part of the city, despite being geographically apart from it. And Green College is the part of UBC you come to first, when you approach the campus along 4th Avenue or Marine Drive from Kitts. It's the edge of the university on the city side. We're just across the road from the Chan Center. For pedestrians, there are now even signs to point the way. Like the UBC gates, the college gates are never closed. So please, join us when you can. Come for a lecture and discussion. Stay for dinner. As it used to say on the UBC crest, to a mest, this is your place of mind. Green College at the edge of the university is Vancouver's permanent salon on the point, which is why we're so pleased to join forces with global civics salons in the city. Think GC, think salon. Thank you. <laughs>